Life in rural South Texas is quiet for those who live here. If you don't mind the occasional conversation amongst cattle, it's even quieter at night. That is until July 19th, 2023 rolled around. Well, we were totally asleep. I mean, me and my wife and the dog, and all of a sudden we heard a big boom. Grabbed a flashlight, grabbed a gun, and went out to investigate. Just down the road, Paul's father, Weldon, got the same jarring wake-up call. Went out and looked around, thought might have, maybe our butane tank had exploded. Uh, thought some a plane crashed or something like that. Concern prompted a call to the sheriff's office. They said, no, y'all had an earthquake. And this was about 11.30. And I said, no, earthquakes don't explode like that. I mean, it was a big boom, just a great big explosion. Turns out it was a shallow, weak earthquake, measuring 3.8 in magnitude. It may have been jarring, but it wasn't the first time. Briggs recalls another tremor around 2011. I was feeding cows. I didn't feel it because I was on the tractor. But when I came back in the house, my wife and daughter had said something about it. I said, did you feel that? And I said, no. And, and she was sitting at the table and the, the floor just shook for about five seconds. The Ricks live along a rural road called Black Hill. It lies just southwest of Floresville. Last year's earthquake was one of more than 200 measured within the last decade, all within a 50 mile radius of the Riggs homestead, and all happening on the Eagle Ford Shale, a busy oil and gas region of Texas. There's one directly down here, and there's two or three over here. There's actually got one that you can see at night. Probably starting around 10 years ago, we have seen a, a pretty dramatic increase in the number of earthquakes that have been happening in Texas. They absolutely are becoming more common. Um, if you go back about 30 years, we had on average one earthquake per decade. And now, you know, as anyone living south of San Antonio knows, we have, you know, hundreds. And by now, you've probably heard that there's a connection to oil and gas. This is, in fact, undeniably true. But how exactly? And does the future bring concerns for damaging earthquakes as the Eagle Ford play stays active? Before we get there, understanding hydraulic fracturing, which has revolutionized the oil and gas industry, and the subsequent disposal of waste is key. Fracking is a process that allows oil and gas reserves to be freed up. It's done by drilling a well and then eventually inserting water and sand into that well to break up the bedrock below. That frees up the oil and gas. You are going to inject fluids, sand, and a, a cocktail of chemicals, which every company has their own proprietary blend of chemicals, at very high pressures, the high enough pressures that it will crack the rock. In some cases, millions of gallons of water is injected into the well rapidly. Sand is forced into the fractures to keep them open, and then the oil or gas is extracted. But that's not where it ends. When you're finishing that process, you have to pump all that fluid back out. That ends up being a pretty nasty slurry of stuff. The preferred method to get rid of that nasty slurry is to inject it deep back into the ground, which of course raises more concerns. It is very tightly regulated, and if everything is done by the book, there should be no danger to, to aquifers. These two connected but separate processes have led to division among geologists. Which one specifically could be blamed for the seismic activity? So if you had asked me these questions five years ago, I would have said that it was almost entirely the injection of wastewater from fracking that was causing earthquakes. But new research is revealing that it's the fracking process itself mostly causing the issues. And something else to keep in mind here, fracking is not organically creating the shaking. There are pre-existing faults all across South Texas. It's just that they'd never be active in our lifetime if not for the pressure that fracking creates, which is why they term this type of seismic activity as human-induced. I mean, the vast majority of these are, are not felt. Um, you know, and even the ones that are felt, they are, are typically in the magnitude three range. Which may shake your dishes. It's often not until magnitude four and higher that you begin to talk about damage. But as fracking continues, is there a concern that the intensities of the earthquakes will increase? No, I, I don't think they have any immediate need to be worried, certainly not for like loss of life or major damage to infrastructure. And according to Cannon, out of thousands of wells, only around 10% of those drilled ever cause an earthquake. Which brings us to a philosophical question. If there's little damage and the oil and gas industry is benefiting, do we take the good with the bad? Other than being a nuisance, are these earthquakes a problem? No, said those we talked to. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Just yeah. know not to put certain things up on shelves and stuff, but yeah. 
Yeah. We only had one small little picture frame fall down off a shelf and that's it. It's good for the economy, not just Texas, not just Pleasanton, I just go to Wilson Corns County, but, but for the state. You need only look at the Eagle Ford cities to see the money it's injected into the economy. And while the rigs have not directly benefited from oil companies drilling on their property, some of their neighbors have. Maybe it'll come this way. Sure, sure. That, that'd be all right. We do live in an interconnected world where we are, um, if we're not producing our own oil, we are relying on regimes in other parts of the world, some of which don't particularly like us, and having our own local sources of oil, even with things like induced seismicity that come along with them, is geopolitically advantageous. Now, let's shift north to a place that, for the most part, has avoided earthquakes. San Antonio. Remember, the Balcones Fault runs right through the city. It's an ancient fault that hasn't moved in millions of years. These are old, really old faults that without the oil and gas production, we wouldn't have considered active. Or the evidence that they were last active is kind of millions of years ago. Um, but these are faults that are sitting there. There wasn't stress accumulating on them until we you know, started changing where the fluids are distributed under the ground. In this case, though, the Balcones Fault also created the Edwards Aquifer, which comes with stringent regulation and protection by proxy. Because the Balcones Fault system is so intimately tied to our local aquifer, you know, there's, there's no way that any regulator is ever going to allow any of this stuff anywhere near the Balcones Fault system. In other words, San Antonio won't be shaking anytime soon, at least not in a big way. Still, those who work downtown might remember November 16th, 2022, when an earthquake occurred hundreds of miles away in West Texas. In San Antonio that day, we started receiving numerous reports of those in high-rise buildings reporting shaking, which is a pretty eerie feeling considering that earthquake was some 300 miles away. Those on the ground never felt a thing. If you imagine, uh, like, you know, my finger being the building as I move the base, a minor move in the base results in a much larger amplitude of motion at the top. Which means the bulk of us will be none the wiser the next time the Earth decides to tremor under South Texas. And those who do feel the shaking from time to time, that's a lot, will just treat it as nothing more than a topic for some front porch conversation. For Case That Explains, I'm meteorologist Justin Horn. To check out all of our Case That Explains coverage, scan this QR code. You can watch Explains anytime on demand on KSAT Plus, KSAT.com, or the KSAT YouTube channel.